Homo Society, we believe that talking, discussing, and exploring ideas together is essential to the design process. Our goal is to create a platform with a new vision of micro and macro trends within this industry, generating added value for the design lover community. Uh, design talks includes then interviews with leading architects, interior designers, and showrooms to discover and discuss about what's trending and the whole creative process of any project. I am Susana Ramos, and I'm honored to have today as our guest of Homo Society Design Talks, Shruti Sodi. Uh, thank you so much. Hello, Shruti. Thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to have you on Design Talks. Thank you so much for having me over. Um, according to your website, you studied English accolades and psychology from Shimla and uh, then ventured in the world of uh, modeling. With such a wide variety of interests, what made you pursue um, interior designing? I would say I was always very creative as a person. I had that creative instinct. I wanted to create beautiful things. Mm -hmm. I was very active in dance, drama, uh, paintings, poetry, you know, things that somewhere down the line, as you grow older, you know, you, mm -hmm. you lose your way because there's so many other options that are coming your way. And you want to take up those opportunities. Of course, Elite Model Management, a franchisee from Paris, offered me a great opportunity to sign up with them as a model. So I thought, okay, maybe, you know, these, these are the things, these are also creative in a way, and it's also related to fashion industry. Um, I might want to kind of give this a shot, but over a period of time, um, I did realize that was not my calling. I mean, walking mm -hmm. the ramp, I understand anchoring, doing voiceovers. There is so much that I actually was doing with, uh, you know, when I was with Elite. Uh, but I realized that was not my calling. And I moved furthermore to marketing mm -hmm. and brand management for, the, for a lot of brands because of communication. Um, uh, and three years down the line, I realized when I'm 30 that no, even this is not working for me. I am creative as a person. I'm not the kind of person to put me in front and look all nice and stunning and make a conversation. I'm the kind of person to scratch my head, mm -hmm. work with a pen or pencil, sketch and do my thing, something that I've always done, something that I've always loved doing. Uh, my father had, you know, multiple properties when we were growing up and he was very, very fond of designing every house. So I took that also as quite an inspiration from him. So from there on, I realized that 30, 31, I took a six months break and I decided that okay, this is it. This is not working for me. I need time. I need to think about what I really want to do in life. And that's when the whole thing about creating beautiful homes, beautiful spaces, just, uh, you know, is something that struck me. And mm -hmm. I had no qualifications, nothing. And I just was so confident that I could do this because I had that connection from my growing up years that I decided, no, this is something that I'm, I'm going to go ahead with. I'm going to do this. And I started telling everybody that I am an interior designer. I hired a team, of course, for qualified people because, uh, you know, designing is one thing. And then putting it in uh, execution formation is something different. You know, you lack technically in a lot of spaces. So I learned on my job. And the first project that I actually did was a farmhouse. Uh, it went brilliantly well. Um, you know, people were kind to trust uh, you know, my, in my abilities. And from there on, I just took up projects after projects and I started doing projects pan India. In fact, I do uh, right after the farm, I got a lot of projects in Goa. So mm -hmm. for the next five years, I really got busy in Goa. And I knew that's, that's how the whole start actually for me happened. Yeah, it was a very courageous decision, but uh, looking right. at your work, definitely the right one. Uh, right, I hope so. Yes. And your style seems to range from uh, um, mid-century designs to a more classical style. Um, what are your biggest in inspirations when designing? I love mid-century. I love mm -hmm. Covet House. Uh, mm -hmm. They've inspired me deeply. I will not deny. They are a couple of sisters together from Brabu to Coquette. Mm -hmm. um, I've really been inspired. Uh, mid-century also inspiration. I drive some of it from, you know, Coquette, Brabu, Boca. And uh, I've had the opportunity to visit Portugal, you know, mm -hmm. look at the villas, look at the factories, and it was brilliant. Uh, something that I felt that I really, truly connected with when I went with my clients 
and more so, uh, you know, just looking at um, uh, mid-century as one style. I love classics. I'm not the kind of person to go Victorian mm -hmm. too much. Uh, but in India, there is a huge demand for modern luxury. So, you know, luxury is a very broad term. It could yeah. be modern, it could be minimalistic, it could be mid-century, it could be classic, you know. Uh, but people in India love things larger than life. And of course, there are a lot of clients who want minimalistic also. So we primarily in our company cater to what the clients want. So mm -hmm. if the clients seek you know, mid-century, I'd love to do it. If it's classic, I'd love to do it. Modern minimalistic, yes, we are catering to that. We are catering to all sorts of luxury designs for clients. So totally, entirely depends on project to project. And each project has its own requirements and preferences. And according to that, we kind of, uh, you know, cater mm -hmm. to the needs. Of course. And you have several projects that have been projected all over India, including in several villas, as you said, where um, you are able to communicate and surround yourself with um, many different cultures and people all over this Correct. country. How would you Correct. say that has, uh, that has shaped you as an artist and influenced your style? Um, I would say India is very diverse in its culture, in its food, language. People are larger than life. We live in mm -hmm. joint family systems. Uh, we can afford, uh, you know, house helps in multitude. So when you work with prominent families in Pan India, uh, you need to understand primarily where they come from and what are their lifestyles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they could want A, B, C, D, but you know, to arrive at what will practically work for them uh, needs a lot of study prior before we actually go into the styling part of it. And of course, all clients do have their preferences. They tell me I want this, I want that, all of that is okay. But for example, um, you know, you're looking at a beautiful Italian or Indian kitchen, but if I have like 20 cooks working there and fried food, a, a smoke coming from all over, you know, it'll make the other guests very uncomfortable. So what happens is in these kitchens, you work with three kitchens. You have a display kitchen, then you have a back kitchen where the main work happens. And then you have a washing area, you know. Uh, India is, uh, again, a joint family system. So close family wants to sit together. So there is a separate seating for them. Um, certain guests who are coming from outside, they have a cer certain set of seating that is required for them. And then there are, you know, so many times there are politicos and there are bureaucrats who are wanting uh, a space where, which is very prime, mm -hmm. um, they can look at the house, they can entertain their formal guests. And, you know, so, so you're not looking at just, just one formal space, one informal space. It totally depends on what is the movement of the house. How many helps do they have? Do they want the helps to be seen when a prominent people are sitting or there has to be a back door entry? You know, mm -hmm. so all these things kind of um, um, uh, are very motivating when you design uh, a certain space and it has to be uh, done the right way, looking at the lifestyles of people. and. Every state, believe you me, is different. Every, um, um, you know, the language is different. People's way of living is very different and the expectations are very different. So um, I catch the lifestyle part as a nerve and then, you know, understand, of course, what they really want and then build upon, you know, the kind of design theme that we uh, kind of, you know, kind of uh, mm -hmm. work with them. So, yeah, um, so that's Yes, as you probably know, in our group, we have a bathroom a furniture brand, Maison Valentina. And uh, we found it very interesting that some of our clients in India requested free standings to have on their living rooms so they could wash their hands after the meals. And uh, we always use yes. this as an example on how important it is to uh, have options for different uh, cultural Correct. needs. Correct, yeah. correct. You'd have a washing area, which is a separate a powder room, but mm -hmm. they say, no, we need a washing area, which is nice, mm -hmm. but some, excuse me, compact, which is mm -hmm. closer to the dining space. So mm -hmm. as soon as we get up, we can just quickly go and wash the hands first. Yes. You know, so all those things. Plus, 
in India, we pay a huge amount of attention to Vastu. And Vastu is a term where you, you know, it's called energy balancing. Mm -hmm. And um, in India, everybody wants to have a house, which is very cohesive to Vastu because it's believed that if you do not have a house, which the energies are not balanced, you know, it starts consuming your energy. Of course. So it is very, very important, uh, uh, so to say, when it comes to so many other factors and traditions and cultures that India, you know, India is uh -huh. close knit with so much that's happening in our culture. We don't even know uh, so much of our own country because yes. uh, we've not traveled all the states. Uh, but Vastu, of course, binds a lot of people who strongly believe in it, which is clearly, uh, you know, we are talking about energy balancing. So that's another thing what one has to keep in mind when we are, uh, you know, primarily designing homes. Of course. And how do you include, do you include as an interior designer that dimension? Do you have an advisor for uh, those more energetic yes. uh, questions? Um, in India, we've been fortunate because a lot of the students who are studying also study Vastu. Mm -hmm. But Vastu is not just about study. You need to have experience in it and you need to be able to uh, tell the right remedies for it. So there are a lot of people uh, in India, some very renowned names who charge consultation, who come to your house and who actually tell you um, how, you know, where the bed position should be, mm -hmm. what are the color schemes that you should prefer in this particular room. You know, some people go overboard. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a balance that's required. Okay, in the kitchen, I understand that the fire is a very important part of a house. So the fire position needs to be in a certain way. Water needs to be in a certain way. Your bathroom, toilet cannot face northeast position because in India, that is the position of the gods. Mm -hmm. so, you know, these are the things. So you, some people who believe light, okay, Shruti, just tell us the basics and we don't want to go with, wrong with Vastu. Yeah, we are fully equipped to do it. But somebody who is totally adamant about going into detail and doing everything just the right way as per Vastu, there is no end to it. Then they hire a consultant uh, mm -hmm. or we hire a consultant for them for the job. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, I've right. never heard about that. I have heard about Feng Shui that I believe may be similar yes. in the approach, but I've never heard about that. Feng Shui is yeah. sort of energy balancing, but Vastu, like, uh, there's this um, residence that I was doing for a client and he kept complaining to me every time, I'm not getting sleep, I'm not getting sleep, I'm not getting sleep. I said, you're not getting sleep because you're sleeping under the beam. It is not okay as per Vastu. Please move your bed to this direction. <laughs> and after that, he was like, oh my God, Shruti, this works. This is amazing. You know, I said, yeah, there's small things. Maybe, you know, your, your, your bedroom was not balanced. And that's why you were not getting proper sleep because the energy was getting depleted from you. These things actually do, Suzen, definitely I feel from my experience in, you know, nine, 10 years, um, to some extent, definitely make a difference. Well, yes, I've been talking also on this project of Design Talks with other designers and this holistic approach to design, I think it's, uh, it's getting more and more important and clients pay not only attention to aesthetics, but the overall feel of the space. Absolutely, absolutely. And Shruti, uh, not only you do interior designing, but you also design your uh, furniture pieces, more specifically yes. the butterfly. How did that process go and what inspired you to do it? You know, the fact of the matter is that when you're designing, you're of course sourcing from all the best brands possible and the choices that your clients make and you pick up, you know, the designs that you feel are quite suitable for what you're doing. But I feel, um, I felt that when I am designing, I need a sense of completion. So it is not this project and that project that I buy and, you know, I create uh, a design uh, and I put it in a room. I need to have my own creations, a piece that it's a statement in itself in which I surround my entire design experience. So I can easily walk up to a store. There are plenty of them. I can easily, you know, pick up some design.